geodesy, also known as geodetics or geodetics engineering, a branch of applied mathematics and earth sciences, is the scientific discipline that deals with the measurement and representation of the earth, including its gravitational field, in a three-dimensional time-varying space. Geodesists also study geodynamical phenomena such as crustal motion, tides, and polar motion. For this they design global and national control networks, using space and terrestrial techniques while relying on datums and coordinate systems. Definition Geodesy, from the Greek word gamma epsilon omega delta alpha iota sigma iota alpha or geodesia, is primarily concerned with positioning within the temporally varying gravity field. Somewhat obsolete nowadays, geodesy in the German-speaking world is divided into higher geodesy which is concerned with measuring the Earth on the global scale, and practical geodesy, or engineering geodesy, which is concerned with measuring specific parts or regions of the Earth, and which includes surveying. The shape of the Earth is to a large extent the result of its rotation, which causes its equatorial bulge, and the competition of geological processes such as the collision of plates and of volcanism, resisted by the Earth's gravity field. This applies to the solid surface, the liquid surface and the Earth's atmosphere. For this reason, the study of the Earth's gravity field is called physical geodesy by some. History Geoid and reference ellipsoid The geoid is essentially the figure of the Earth abstracted from its topographical features. It is an idealized equilibrium surface of sea water, the mean sea level surface in the absence of currents, air pressure variations etc., and continued under the continental masses. The geoid, unlike the reference ellipsoid, is irregular and too complicated to serve as the computational surface on which to solve geometrical problems like point positioning. The geometrical separation between the geoid and the reference ellipsoid is called the geoidal undulation. It varies globally between plus or minus 110 meters. When referred to the GRS-80 ellipsoid, a reference ellipsoid, customarily chosen to be the same size as the geoid, is described by its semi-major axis R and flattening F. The quantity F equals A, where B is the semi-minor axis, is a purely geometrical one. The mechanical ellipticity of the Earth can be determined to high precision by observation of satellite orbit perturbations. Its relationship with the geometrical flattening is indirect. The relationship depends on the internal density distribution, or, in simplest terms, the degree of central concentration of mass. The 1980 geodetic reference system posited a 6,378,137 meters semi-major axis and a 1, 298.257 flattening. This system was adopted at the 17th General Assembly of the International Union of Geodesy and Geophysics. It is essentially the basis for geodetic positioning by the Global Positioning System and is thus also in widespread use outside the geodetic community. The numerous other systems which have been used by diverse countries for their maps and charts are gradually dropping out of use as more and more countries move to global geocentric reference systems using the GRS-80 reference ellipsoid coordinate systems in space. The locations of points in three-dimensional space are most conveniently described by three Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, and, since the advent of satellite positioning, such coordinate systems are typically geocentric. The axis is aligned with the Earth's rotation axis. Prior to the era of satellite geodesy, the coordinate systems associated with the geodetic datum are tended to be geocentric but their origins differed from the geocenter by hundreds of meters due to regional deviations in the direction of the plumb line. These regional geodetic datums, such as ED50 or 27 Namibian dollars have ellipsoids associated with them that are regional, best fits to the geoids within their areas of validity, minimizing the deflections of the vertical over these areas. It is only because GPS satellites orbit about the geocenter, 
that this point becomes naturally the origin of a coordinate system defined by satellite geodetic means. As the satellite positions in space are themselves computed in such a system, geocentric coordinate systems used in geodesy can be divided naturally into two classes. Inertial reference systems, where the coordinate axes retain their orientation relative to the fixed stars, or equivalently, to the rotation axes of ideal gyroscopes, the axis points to the vernal equinox. Co-rotating, also ECEF, where the axes are attached to the solid body of the Earth. The axis lies within the Greenwich Observatory's meridian plane. The coordinate transformation between these two systems is described to good approximation by sidereal time, which takes into account variations in the Earth's axial rotation. A more accurate description also takes polar motion into account, a phenomenon closely monitored by geodesists. Coordinate systems in the plane in surveying and mapping important fields of application of geodesy. Two general types of coordinate systems are used in the plane. Planopolar, in which points in a plane are defined by a distance from a specified point along a ray having a specified direction with respect to a baseline or axis. Rectangular points are defined by distances from two perpendicular axes called an it is geodetic practice, contrary to the mathematical convention, to let the axis point to the north and the axis to the east. Rectangular coordinates in the plane can be used intuitively with respect to one's current location, in which case the axis will point to the local north. More formally, such coordinates can be obtained from three-dimensional coordinates using the artifice of a map projection. It is not possible to map the curved surface of the Earth onto a flat map surface without deformation. The compromise most often chosen, called a conformal projection, preserves angles and length ratios, so that small circles are mapped as small circles and small squares as squares. An example of such a projection is UTM. Within the map plane, we have rectangular coordinates and, in this case the north direction used for reference is the map north, not the local north. The difference between the two is called meridian convergence. It is easy enough to translate between polar and rectangular coordinates in the plane. Let, as above, direction and distance be in respectively. Then we have the reverse transformation as given by heights. In geodesy, point or terrain heights are above sea level, an irregular, physically defined surface. Therefore, a height should ideally not be referred to as a coordinate. It is more like a physical quantity, and though it can be tempting to treat height as the vertical coordinate, in addition to the horizontal coordinates and, and though this actually is a good approximation of physical reality in small areas, it quickly becomes invalid for regional considerations. Heights come in the following variants. Orthometric heights, normal heights, geopotential heights, each has its advantages and disadvantages. Both orthometric and normal heights are heights in meters above sea level, whereas geopotential numbers are measures of potential energy and not metric. Orthometric and normal heights differ in the precise way in which mean sea level is conceptually continued under the continental masses. The reference surface for orthometric heights is the geoid, an equipotential surface approximating mean sea level. None of these heights is in any way related to geodetic or ellipsoidal heights, which express the height of a point above the reference ellipsoid. Satellite positioning receivers typically provide ellipsoidal heights, unless they are fitted with special converging software based on a model of the geoid. Geodetic data. Because geodetic point coordinates are always obtained in a system that has been constructed itself using real observations, geodesists introduce the concept of a geodetic datum, a physical realization of a coordinate system used for describing point locations. The realization is the result of choosing conventional coordinate values for one or more datum points. In the case of height datums, it suffices to choose one datum point, the reference benchmark, typically a tide gauge at the shore. 
Thus we have vertical datums like the NAP, the North American Vertical Datum 1988, the Kronstadt Datum, the Trieste Datum, and so on. In case of plane or spatial coordinates, we typically need several datum points. A regional, ellipsoidal datum like ED50 can be fixed by prescribing the undulation of the geoid and the deflection of the vertical in one datum point. In this case, the Helmert Tower in Potsdam. However, an overdetermined ensemble of datum points can also be used. Changing the coordinates of a point set referring to one datum, so to make them refer to another datum, is called a datum transformation. In the case of vertical datums, this consists of simply adding a constant shift to all height values. In the case of plane or spatial coordinates, datum transformation takes the form of a similarity or Helmert transformation, consisting of a rotation and scaling operation in addition to a simple translation. In the plane, a Helmert transformation has four parameters in space. 7. A note on terminology in the abstract, a coordinate system as used in mathematics and geodesy is, e.g., in ISO terminology referred to as a coordinate system. International geodetic organizations like the IERS speak of a reference system. When these coordinates are realized by choosing datum points and fixing a geodetic datum, ISO uses the terminology coordinate reference system, while IERS speaks of a reference frame. Our datum transformation again is referred to by ISO as a coordinate transformation. Point positioning Point positioning is the determination of the coordinates of a point on land, at sea, or in space with respect to a coordinate system. Point position is solved by computation from measurements linking the known positions of terrestrial or extraterrestrial points with the unknown terrestrial position. This may involve transformations between or among astronomical and terrestrial coordinate systems. The known points used for point positioning can be triangulation points of a higher order network or GPS satellites. Traditionally, a hierarchy of networks has been built to allow point positioning within a country. Highest in the hierarchy were triangulation networks. These were densified into networks of traverses, into which local mapping surveying measurements, usually with measuring tape, corner prism and the familiar red and white poles, are tied. Nowadays all but special measurements are performed with GPS. The higher order networks are measured with static GPS, using differential measurement to determine vectors between terrestrial points. These vectors are then adjusted in traditional network fashion. A global polyhedron of permanently operating GPS stations under the auspices of the IERS is used to define a single global geocentric reference frame which serves as the zero-order global reference to which national measurements are attached. For surveying mappings, frequently real-time kinematic GPS is employed. Tying in the unknown points with known terrestrial points close by in real time. One purpose of point positioning is the provision of known points for mapping measurements, also known as control. In every country, thousands of such known points exist and are normally documented by the national mapping agencies. Surveyors involved in real estate and insurance will use these to tie their local measurements to geodetic problems. In geometric geodesy, two standard problems exist. First geodetic problem given the point and the direction and distance from that point to a second point, determine that second point. Second geodetic problem give on two points, determine the azimuth and length of the line that connects them. In the case of plane geometry the solutions to both problems reduce to simple trigonometry. On the sphere, the solution is significantly more complex, e.g., in the inverse problem the azimuths will differ between the two endpoints of the connecting great circle arc, i.e., the geodesic. On the ellipsoid of revolution, geodesics may be written in terms of elliptic integrals which are usually evaluated in terms of a series expansion, for example, see Vincenti's formulae. In the general case, the solution is called the geodesic for the surface considered. The differential equations for the geodesic can be solved numerically. 
geodetic observational concepts. Here we define some basic observational concepts, like angles and coordinates, defined in geodesy, mostly from the viewpoint of the local observer. The plumb line or vertical is the direction of local gravity, or the line that results by following it. The zenith is the point on a celestial sphere where the direction of the gravity vector in a point, extended upwards, intersects it. More correct is to call it a less than direction greater than rather than a point. The nadir is the opposite point, where the direction of gravity extended downward intersects the celestial sphere. The celestial horizon is a plane perpendicular to a point's gravity vector. Azimuth is the direction angle within the plane of the horizon, typically counted clockwise from the north or south. Elevation is the angular height of an object above the horizon, alternatively zenith distance, being equal to 90 degrees minus elevation. Local topocentric coordinates are azimuth and elevation angle and distance. The north celestial pole is the extension of the Earth's instantaneous spin axis extended northward to intersect the celestial sphere. The celestial equator is the intersection of the Earth equatorial plane with the celestial sphere. A meridian plane is any plane perpendicular to the celestial equator and containing the celestial poles. The local meridian is the plane containing the direction to the zenith and the direction to the celestial pole. Geodetic measurements. The level is used for determining height differences and height reference systems, commonly referred to mean sea level. The traditional spirit level produces these practically most useful heights above sea level directly, the more economical use of GPS instruments for height determination requires precise knowledge of the figure of the geoid. As GPS only gives heights above the GRS-80 reference ellipsoid, as geoid knowledge accumulates, one may expect to use the GPS heighting to spread. The theodal light is used to measure horizontal and vertical angles to target points. These angles are referred to the local vertical. The tachyometer additionally determines, electronically or electro-optically, the distance to target and is highly automated to even robotic in its operations. The method of free station position is widely used for local detail surveys. Tachyometers are commonly employed although the old-fashioned rectangular technique using angle prism and steel tape is still an inexpensive alternative. Real-time kinematic GPS techniques are used as well. Data collected are tagged and recorded digitally for entry into a geographic information system database. Geodetic GPS receivers produce directly three-dimensional coordinates in a geocentric coordinate frame. Such a frame is e.g. WGS84, or the frames that are regularly produced and published by the International Earth Rotation and Reference Systems Service. GPS receivers have almost completely replaced terrestrial instruments for large-scale base network surveys. For planet-wide geodetic surveys, previously impossible, we can still mention satellite laser ranging and lunar laser ranging and very long baseline interferometry techniques. All these techniques also serve to monitor Earth rotation irregularities as well as plate tectonic motions. Gravity is measured using gravimeters. Basically, there are two kinds of gravimeters. Absolute gravimeters, which nowadays can also be used in the field, are based directly on measuring the acceleration of free fall. They are used for establishing the vertical geospatial control. Most common relative gravimeters are spring-based. They are used in gravity surveys over large areas for establishing the figure of the geoid over these areas. Most accurate relative gravimeters are superconducting gravimeters and these are sensitive to one thousandth of one billionth of Earth surface gravity. Twenty-some superconducting gravimeters are used worldwide for studying Earth tides, rotation, interior, and ocean and atmospheric loading, as well as for verifying the Newtonian constant of gravitation. In the future gravity, and altitude, will be measured by relativistic time dilation measured by strontium optical clocks. 
units and measures on the ellipsoid. Geographical latitude and longitude are stated in the units degree, minute of arc, and second of arc. They are angles, not metric measures, and describe the direction of the local normal to the reference ellipsoid of revolution. This is approximately the same as the direction of the plumb line, i.e., local gravity, which is also the normal to the geoid surface. For this reason, astronomical position determination, measuring the direction of the plumb line by astronomical means, works fairly well provided an ellipsoidal model of the figure of the Earth is used. One geographical mile, defined as one minute of arc on the equator, equals 1855.3257192 meters. One nautical mile is one minute of astronomical latitude. A meter was originally defined as the ten millionth part of the length of a meridian. This means that one kilometer is roughly equal to asterisk 360 asterisk 60 meridional minutes of arc, which equals 0.54 nautical mile, though this is not exact because the two units are defined on different bases.